Hello everyone and welcome to Your Health, Your Choice. I am Dr. Robin McMurrain and we are coming to you live from our studios at Olira Heights in San Fernando. Today is Wednesday, March the 8th, 2023. And on tonight's program, we're going to be discussing sleep and its impact on our health. In studio with me tonight is Dr. Sharad Mohip. Dr. Mohip is a specialist medical officer in ENT medicine. As usual, as usual guys, um, our number should come up at the bottom of your screens and we'll do our very best to answer each and every one of your questions during the program. So guys, it's a live program tonight. We're going to talk about sleep and its impact on our health. And let's say hello to Dr. Sherrod. Doc, how are you going? Welcome to the program. Welcome to your health, your choice. It's great to have you on the program, Sherrod. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. All right, Sherrod. So, Sherrod, I mean, um, it's, it's one of those topics that a little bit unusual, right? It's mm -hmm. not a mainstream uh, medical discussion, sleep. However, myself and yourself have been talking in the background over the last few weeks, and we're realizing that a lot of the medical problems and a lot of illnesses that we see, and a lot of the lack of optimal health is due to a lack of sleep. It's also a field that is really emerging in other countries, and it's something that um, we think, myself and yourself think, that people need to know about to optimize their health. So, um, Sharad, I'm just gonna, we're just going to briefly educate the public a little bit, and I'm going to start with, a, with the first question being first, which is, exactly how much sleep does someone need? <laughs> okay, so first of all, as we know, sleep is something that occurs once every 24 hours. Right. Um, it has puzzled scientists for ages. Why do we need sleep? Yeah. But common sense will tell you that after the stress of an entire day, yeah. and the stress on an evolutionary level of yeah. having to feed your family, yes. survive, yes. you need some downtime to rejuvenate and replenish right. oneself. Right. And every species, including the, every mammalian species especially, have something called a sleep-wake cycle right. well, where they will have a period of wakefulness yes. followed by rest. Yes. Um, now, s the need for sleep varies by age. Right, exactly. What, what's your number of hours generally? So, in an adult like me and you, yes. seven to nine hours is the consensus. Right. There may be some part of the population that needs nine to ten hours, but a very minor amount. Right. So, say like one percent of the population. Right. Now, Figures tells us that only about 70% of um, people, especially in North American figures, yeah. get seven to nine hours of sleep. All right. Um, what about, I mean, what about like, I suppose it's, kind of, it's not a cookie cutter approach to everyone, but what about elderly people? How much hours sleep do elderly people need? Because so sometimes they sleep less hours. Interestingly, yeah. elderly people need less sleep right. than um, people say middle-aged people right so once you're over 60 it drops from seven to nine hours to six to seven hours six to seven there's hours. not a major drop right but there's less need for sleep all right and no infants on the other yeah. hand sleep for half of the day yeah so when you're zero, zero to three months old yeah it's about 14 to 17 hours of sleep yeah and young children six to 12 usually need around nine to 12 hours of sleep and adolescents teenagers how much adolescents go, goes up to around eight to ten hours right and the reason for this is because during sleep a lot of growth hormones are secreted yeah and we know the time when we need growth hormones the most is when our bodies are actually growing yeah. and making that neurological connection to grow to learn right. to speak to talk so that is why right. the pediatric population needs more sleep than the adult population right. um other than the release of hormones right in the pediatric population and the teenage population why is it important for people to get sufficient sleep? Okay, so this is a question that was answered by studying the sleep-deprived population over yeah. time. Yeah. So, it has been shown that people who get less than the optimal amount of sleep, yeah. every system in the body is affected negatively. Yeah. This, is, this is because during sleep, yeah. the cells regenerate, yeah. they restore themselves, yeah. and they replenish and even our DNA yeah. um, replenishes itself to um, deal with the stresses of the upcoming day. Right. Now everybody has the unpleasant ex experience yeah. of probably waking for the entire night and going to work the yeah. next day. Yeah. They feel sick, yeah. they have headaches, 
Yeah. They feel unmotivated. Yeah. They feel excessive daytime sleepiness. Yeah. Right. So wh while that is a minor blip and they will get back sleep, yeah. the population who suffers the most is the chronically sleep deprived population. Right. So um what 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 medical conditions or what adverse e um, effect on their health uh, on their health of the of the chronically deprived? So the chronically population. sleep deprived. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it by system. Yeah, has a lot of psychological or neuropsychiatric problems. Yeah, the first one is sleepiness. Yeah, this comes at a cost to our population because the sleepy population cannot be productive. Yeah, they are not as good as their counterparts in problem-solving skill. Mm -hmm. um, something what we call higher functioning and cognition. Mm -hmm. They have slower reflexes. Mm -hmm. Even in athletes who have not slept as much as their counterparts, mm -hmm. doesn't have a proper reaction time. Mm -hmm. Now this translates further mm -hmm. into neurological problems such as depression, mm -hmm. mood disorders and irritability mm -hmm. and this can have a strain on the family and the relationship between mm -hmm. anyone, your colleagues, your spouse mm -hmm. and that is just one of the many conditions that sleep affect, um, causes. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the cardiovascular system mm -hmm. too. When we sleep, there's a total shutdown in mental activity and this neural discharge to our heart. Mm -hmm. So our heart beats slower, mm -hmm. our pressure drops, mm -hmm. and all the receptors that is involved in controlling that pressure <coughs> mm -hmm. replenishes itself. Mm -hmm. So the population who lacks sleep, as they see over time, gets mm -hmm. high blood pressure, mm -hmm. a strain in the heart, mm -hmm. and are more open to getting an, a myocardial infarction, what we know as a heart attack, mm -hmm. a stroke, mm -hmm. plaque buildup. Mm -hmm. And it has been shown scientifically that 8% of deaths are attributable to improper sleep. Right. So it's a huge in, cardiovascular risk. A huge cardiovascular risk and that I think is the main mm -hmm. problem here because mm -hmm. cardiovascular risk, the, the final outcome is about 10 years of, mm -hmm. of your life or death. Mm -hmm. I suppose it makes sense because we have a large population that is hypertensive, yes. um, high blood pressure, and I suppose um, proper sleep will aid in, in the control of, of the high blood pressure. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, so s when you get a good amount of sleep, mm -hmm. now I'm saying getting seven to nine hours is mm -hmm. good, but you have to get a quality sleep as well. Right. So, so we'll get into that later. Right. Right. right? Um, mm -hmm. You find people who have improper sleep or lack of uh, a certain amount of hours of sleep, mm -hmm. get high blood pressure at an earlier age. Mm -hmm. And the people who are already hypertensive mm -hmm. cannot control the pressure as well. All right. So how do we know how much sleep we need? Okay. For example, um, I've had patients, I mean, older, elderly patients, not, who have been told me all their life, all they need was four to five hours mm -hmm. sleep. Um, we've seen people all over the world, leaders of the world, who sometimes only need four hours sleep. How do we know what we need? How do we know what's the optimal amount well, of sleep for us as a person? Well, there are a lot of people who say they sleep five hours and they function normally. Yeah. However, a lot of these people repay their sleep debt. What do you mean by that? So, if you sleep five hours, you see that is about two hours. Yes. Right? So, okay. so, sometimes over the weekend, they will sleep a prolonged uh, period okay. of time and they make up. While this is not optimal for the body, they themselves under that high stress that works for them. But I tell you, a lot of those people make it up. function under par. Yeah. Go through medical com problems, right. mood swings, psychiatric. Probably problems. undiagnosed too. Undiagnosed. Yeah. And a lot of them have a little nap during the day, an hour or two to make up. All right. for what is lost. All right. So so a lot of people mm -hmm. have poor quality sleep, right? They're not getting enough sleep. Let's take us, I mean, without getting too scientific yet, take us through some simple tips that you can relate to people to get proper sleep, more, more sleep time. Sleep hygiene, in other words. Right, so yeah. yeah. So the implementation of proper sleep is yeah. called sleep hygiene, as yeah. you so eloquently put it. Yeah. Um, so the first thing, when you want to get a proper sleep, yeah. you look at the daytime. Yeah. You must be active. Yes. So it is very important that you have an active lifestyle and not a sedentary lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So you must engage in work, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. When you come home from work, you must engage in regular exercise. Mm -hmm. Exercise is shown mm -hmm. to make the body wind down later on when you're ready for sleep. Okay. So What's the best time to exercise? Like, I mean, some people say when they exercise in the evening times, they can't go to sleep. <laughs> right. So that is a, a very common complaint. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So what happens is it's best uh, soon after work right. or during the day. Right. Because what happens, sometimes it energizes people after the exercise. So if you right. go to the gym at 8 to 10 in the night, yeah. that is when you want to fall asleep. You'll come and maybe look at your ceiling because you're so energized. Right, right, right. right. And you would not fall asleep within half an hour from hitting okay. bed. And then you get sleep deprived in the, in the other way. And then you get sleep deprived. Yeah. I've had it happen to me. I've had yeah. it happen to colleagues. Yeah. And so the best time for exercise is actually during the day, way before sleep, at least, six, at least five hours do, before sleep. Do you think Trinidad and Tobago, I mean, this is a total um, subjective opinion. Do you think we are a population who are, who are sleep deprived? Well, definitely. Why would you say that? Because we don't practice proper sleep hygiene, first mm -hmm. of all. So we were touching on sleep hygiene. Yeah, go ahead. So when you enter the bedroom, mm -hmm. it should be quiet, temperature controlled. Mm -hmm. There shouldn't be any four-legged animals sleeping with you and waking up all night. Right. Then a lot of people have kids. We're talking about animals, the dogs and dogs the sleeping with, right. with humans a lot in their room. Right. And they'll scratch the door to pee. They'll wake yeah. them up during the night. Right. So you have an interrupted sleep. Right. Right. Trinidadians love music, alcohol, mm -hmm. hanging out late at night, mm -hmm. having different... Social. They're Lining. very social, so they mm -hmm. don't have a proper sleep schedule. Mm -hmm. A proper sleep schedule is when you go to bed around the same hour every night. Mm -hmm. Somebody sometimes will go to sleep one, mm -hmm. then they'll go to sleep nine, then they'll mm -hmm. go to sleep three in the morning. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people need to catch up on deadlines in Trinidad. We always last minute. Mm -hmm. So some people will have to catch a deadline and wake up to two every morning and that will disrupt their sleep cycle because mm -hmm. again they will sleep for two to six only get four hours and then the next day mm -hmm. sleep deprived. they sleep deprived sleepy and this is something continually goes on especially in student levels okay. or people who have a lot of stress i would say in people that work as mm -hmm. well because you have to get up to um, traffic in the morning, oh we have God. colleagues who move up and down the highway, mm -hmm. and um, they have to get up early, earlier than, yes. than, than we have early, a very bad, realistic. We have a very bad traffic situation yeah. from, of course, going towards north in the morning and yeah. coming down south. Yeah. And all that actually builds up stress in the body, and we know stress is a factor of not falling asleep properly. And then happen to get up early 4 o'clock, I suppose, in the morning. Yes. Right, so we've touched on sleep hygiene there, right? Mm -hmm. So what, why, why, what is it that, I mean, people describe, yes, you're sleeping, but you're not getting quality rest yes. is that the REM sleep or the REM sleep or okay so what is that explain that to us so there there's something called REM sleep and yeah. non REM sleep yeah right yeah so we go through four stages of sleep yeah the first stage is light sleep yeah. is when our body now falls asleep yeah. you can get waken up easily from that sleep right the second stage of sleep is called deep sleep or slightly deep sleep yeah and this lasts for around 90 minutes to 120 minutes. Yeah. The third level is very deep sleep. Yeah. I mean, you're very, um, the blood pressure plummets here. Yeah. You're really sleeping, the neuronal discharges replenish themselves. Right, that's, the nerves, it. that's, that's a replenishing sleep. Replenishing sleep. Right. And a lot of people do not reach this stage of sleep because of certain disorders. Right, which we're going to discuss. And which we'll discuss later, or somebody right. waking them up during the night. Right. And then as soon as we finish stage three, three, we go to stage four, which is REM sleep. Right. So REM sleep is called rapid eye movement sleep. Yeah. And scientists have determined is that this stage of sleep is where most of the repair and growth and memory consolidation right. happens. Right. But the funny thing about REM sleep is your brain is so active, it's almost like an awake person. Is that where we get all the dreams and stuff? That is where we get all our dreams. Yeah. Our heart rate starts to go, but yeah. it's at this point all the muscles relax and it's almost virtually paralyzed. And I think that is because they don't want you to act out your dreams. Right, right. Right? right. The body just And this is the, this is the last stage of sleep. So this is like early morning sleep before we wake up. Right, no, well or is we it that the, the, the time levels could change depending on the stage. So each stage we have about ninety to one hundred and twenty minutes in. Right. And then we will cycle back up to stage three, then go back. So around two times for the night we'll go through right. sleep. And it's gonna turn the the, 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 um, the leaf a little bit and, and take a different angle. And um, we're talking about somebody not sleeping, right? But sometimes the cause of someone not sleeping is someone else in the bed. What what is snoring? Okay, well snoring is a harsh, deep, hollow sound yeah. caused by the vibration of our soft tissues in the back of our throat. Yeah. And 
when these tissues vibrate at night, mm -hmm. they, they, it translates as a snow. Mm -hmm. So to understand a snow, we must first understand how air flows through to yeah. our lungs. So when we take a breath at night, mm -hmm. our diaphragm contracts mm -hmm. and our lungs act as a vacuum to pull air inside. Mm -hmm. if we f so it starts out our nose mm -hmm. and goes to the back of the nose. Mm -hmm. If we feel our face, there's a nice hard skeleton on our face. Yeah. So when air is sucked into our face, it cannot collapse because of this hard rigid skeleton. Right. However, in the back of our throat, if you open your mouth, you'll see yeah. something called the soft palate. Yes. That's this little L on the back of the throat, on the, f on the roof of the throat. Yeah. That's right under the jaw here. Yeah. There's no rigid skeleton or frame present preventing this tissue from collapsing when yeah. the vacuum is too strong. Yeah. And that tissue vibrates and sometimes collapses until the point that you stop breathing. Right. Okay, and, and that's, that's probably yes. going towards sleep apnea. And then. then the final pathway is into the windpipe. And if you feel the neck, you'll feel this rigid structure here. Yeah. That is so rigid, it can't collapse. All right. But, mm -hmm. I mean, um, snoring is a very common problem. Yes. Um, uh, and you see it's because the soft palate drops down a little bit and, and sets yes. up a vibration, right? Mm -hmm. How could, I mean, you see all these kind of things on the internet to treat snoring, like little things, little, little tape to pull up your nose and stuff like that. What are the ENT treatments for snoring? Is there any? So it depends on the individual, yeah. right? So you were talking about the internet devices. Yeah. So they only work for a minority of patients yeah. who, who has nasal obstruction due to something called valve collapse. Right. So sometimes nasal when obstruction causes snoring. Yeah, yes, okay. nasal obstruction causes snoring. Causes snoring. Right. What happens during nasal obstruction mm -hmm. is we mouth breathe during right. night. And when we mouth breathe during night, our jaw actually goes back and our tongue falls back. Yeah. And the tissues around the tongue, tongue vibrate. Right. And that's what causes the snoring actually. So when you unclog the nose and the patient can actually not mouth breathe anymore, they get a better airflow. Right. And it can stop snoring in about 10 to 15% of snorers. Right. So, so um, mouth breathing and snoring is very much related. It's, it's the same thing. It's very related because when the soft palate drops back in the back of the mouth, yeah. you can't get air through there. So we call it the drowning pathway. You open your mouth. But the problem about mouth breathing is it's not a very good pathway because right. it dries out the throat, yeah. it causes the tongue to fall back because what causes air to flow through yeah. in the back of the tongue yeah. is a proper jaw posture okay. and, yeah. and mouth right. breathing disrupts all of that. Alright, so we're going to take a little break now, right? But uh, let me ask you, is, is, are there ENT surgeries to help people who suffer from snoring? Definitely. All right. So when we come back from the break, I just want you to explain that a little bit. How, yes. people, how people who snore can get help. What is the treatment available to them? Okay. All right, guys. So we're going to take a little break now. Um, we're here with Dr. Sharad Mohip. He's the ENT surgeon. And uh, we're talking about sleep, sleep hygiene, its implications to our health. We're going to talk a little bit about sleep apnea, which is a very important topic. Um, and we're also talking a little bit about snoring. All right, guys. So we'll see you back in one moment. And also, I'd like to formally invite you to send in your questions at this time. All right. Alright guys, we'll be back in one moment. Women's Rights Alliance Annual Solidarity March 2023 Co-organized by the Institute for Gender and Development Studies The Network of NGOs WINAD, Caribbean Women in Leadership, TT, among others At the Queen's Park, Savannah, Saturday, March 11th, 2.30pm to 4.30pm In commemoration of International Women's Day This year's theme, Embrace Everyone 2023, the spotlight is on the importance of protecting the rights of women and girls in all spaces. Women's rights are everyone's responsibility. Bring your t-shirts and come. Bring your message and come. This ad is sponsored by First Citizens Bank Limited. Hi everyone, I'm Stacy from Stacy's Kitchen. Check out our new episodes, season three of Stacy's Kitchen at our new time, 5.30 p.m. on Mondays and Wednesdays, right here on ACTN The Voice. I will be whipping you up some flavorful and appetizing dishes. 
as they say, good food makes a good mood. So guys, stay tuned for this culinary explosion right here on Stacey's Kitchen. Welcome to the Chatak's Kitchen, where it's tastier and spicier. For even more taste, cook with Chatak's Amchar Masala, Saffron, Ground Jeera, and Black Pepper. Mix in Chatak's mild, spicy Omadras curry. Get a burst of excitement with a mango Amchar, Homsa Day, and mango Kuchila, lime and pepper chunks, West Indian hot sauce, and lime pepper sauce. Plus, Chatak's tamarind and mango chutneys are perfect with kalori and sahina. So make your kitchen a Chatak kitchen. Chatak's fruit products. Bringing good taste to life. All right, guys, welcome back. We're here with Dr. Sharad Mohip, he's an ENT surgeon. We're talking about sleep. Um, again, feel free to join the discussion, send in your comments, um, send in your questions. Um, let's take the discussion forward. So, Sharad, just before you went off there, we were talking about snoring, right? What are the treatments for snoring? Well, when we look at snoring, mm -hmm. right? Most of the patients who come in because of snoring is because the bed partner is complaining. Yeah. Yeah. So the yeah. wife will come and say, I cannot sleep. This person is snoring very loudly. Very loudly, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the treatment for snoring, right, mm -hmm. is actually stopping the airway from collapsing. Because mm -hmm. when we go to sleep at night, mm -hmm. the muscle relaxes so much around the throat mm -hmm. and the soft palate mm -hmm. that the area narrows, it vibrates, and then some people will gasp and not be able to breathe. Mm -hmm. The thing is, we don't jump straight to surgery for people who snore mm -hmm. unless there is an identifiable correction. Mm -hmm. So for example, if there's a thin person who comes in snoring mm -hmm. and they have polyps in their nose or they have mm -hmm. big tonsils, it's mm -hmm. an easy fix. We remove their tonsils, mm -hmm. we fix the polyps of the nose and they will stop snoring. Mm -hmm. So oh. big tonsils cause snoring? Yes, big tonsils and something, a tissue called adenine noise in the back of the throat causes snoring, especially in children. Mm. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the treatment for that is, is strictly surgical? Right, so first of all, we always try some conservative management to shrink the adenoids. There's mm -hmm. certain medications that we do to shrink the adenoids and tonsils. Mm -hmm. And if the patient is not doing well after three months, mm -hmm. we take out the tonsils and adenoids. And, and then the polyps cause snoring right. as well? Yes, any blockage of the nose can cause snoring and around 10 to 15% of patients can correct their snoring. Mm -hmm. With medication? With, with medication or nasal, uh, simple nasal surgery. All right. Um, other than surgery, how else can we treat So snoring? the vast majority of patients who come in with snoring mm -hmm. has something called obstructive sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. And they are people who are overweight, mm -hmm. who have a lot of fatty deposits on the tongue mm -hmm. and the soft palate. And when they lie down and relax, they, they undergo snoring and repeated stifling episodes. Mm -hmm. And the first thing we do is try to tell them to lose weight. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so snoring and and the, and the continuation of which is sleep apnea mostly affects obese people, heavy people. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very mostly affects heavy um, obese people, but mm -hmm. it can happen to anyone. Why would it affect obese people mostly? Right. So when uh, we gain weight, mm -hmm. there's fatty deposits going around the soft palate, mm -hmm. and the where tongue. is the soft palate? Well, we could go to our slide now. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, Josh, you can pull up the slide there. It's on slide one. It's a little bit difficult to conceptualize without you. Yes. Right, so explain that slide to us. Okay, so we could see um, two images mm -hmm. and we can see it labeled very nicely for us. So mm -hmm. the top image is a patient who has normal breathing. Mm -hmm indicated by the two blue arrows. Right, so that's the oxygen right. and the air coming in that's there, the right? oxygen and the air coming One in. coming in from the nose. One passage. coming in from the nose, one coming from the mouth. mouth. Right. You can see behind the nose, when it merges to the throat, mm -hmm. there's a little tissue that goes down there. If you open your mouth and look in the back of the throat, mm -hmm. that tissue there is called the soft palate, mm -hmm. right at the roof of the mouth. Okay, that's part of the uvula. That is the uvula, mm -hmm. and the tissues above the uvula is called the soft palate. Right. So when somebody gets put on, puts on weight or is heavy, that swells as well? So when somebody puts on weight uh -huh. and gets heavy, they can have a boggy, long uvula okay. that get with fatty deposits but also the sides of the throat as well uh -huh. gets fatty deposits and the, there's entire 
narrowing of the airway. Okay. And a narrow airway, a narrowed airway is much more prone to collapse. Right, right, right. right? right. You ever see somebody suck through a straw and the straw collapses in the middle? Yes. At a weak point? Yeah. That is the weak point, that narrow area. Right. And it will collapse. And the other more common area collapses by the tongue as well. All right. So nasal breathing and mouth breathing is both common in sleep. Because the slide you showed us there, it showed somebody with oxygen flowing through the nose and through the mouth. Actually, what is normal? Actually, nasal breathing alone is normal. Right. right? When the nose is clogged or the soft palate, palate falls back, then the mouth opens to allow for, for breathing. All right. So the slide they have a little bit right there. Um, all right. So the so tell us a little bit more, more obstructive sleep apnea. So this, this palate falls down and causes an obstruction, and that is what is called obstructive sleep, sleep apnea. apnea. And it mostly happens in heavy people. It mostly happens in overweight, obese people, yes. but there is a population as well. Right. Um, in, in, in normal individuals right. where their muscles just collapse at night and right. it, it can cause... Um, How would someone know that they have obstructive sleep apnea? All right. So as the name implies, apnea is a pause in breathing. Okay. Everybody has a pause in breathing at least five times during the night. Even you, even me. When they stop breathing. When they stop breathing, now that is normal. Okay. And when it is when it occurs more than five times per hour, okay. it is classified as obstructive sleep apnea. Right. Right? So the obstructive sleep apnea person, uh -huh. what will happen? They will stop breathing, uh -huh. right? And the body oxygen will drop. Uh-huh. When the body oxygen drops, the body undergoes a stress and there's a arousal and the body wakes itself up. Mm -hmm. And this, we call it a micro arousal. Mm -hmm. The patient doesn't even know they are waking back into a, an arousal. Okay. And this arousal causes fragmented sleep. You are un unable to go into deep sleep. Mm -hmm. And a person with bad sleep apnea can have about 30 to 100 micro arousals every night. Mm -hmm. So they wake up feeling unrefreshed. So poor quality sleep altogether. Very poor quality sleep. They will tell you, doc, I just sleep eight hours. Mm -hmm. Well, I just wake up with headaches. Mm -hmm. I wake up with um, feeling very sleepy. Mm -hmm. I have the lowest mood. Mm -hmm. I want to sleep with. How about dry mouth? A lot of people wake up with dry mouth. A lot mouth. of people wake up with dry mouth. Probably a little bit of drool on the side of the mouth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of people wake up with a dry mouth, a sore throat, and the mm -hmm. uvula will get swollen and long and snorers because it's mm -hmm. vibrating. Mm -hmm. But back to the symptoms, right? Yes, yes. I just wanted to tell you the most mm -hmm. common symptoms. Mm -hmm. It's divided into nighttime and daytime symptoms. Mm -hmm. So the bed partner will come and say, mm -hmm. They are snoring loudly. Mm -hmm. This is the type of people that can hear snoring from the other room. This is obstructive sleep apnea. Obstructive sleep apnea, snoring. Mm -hmm. The second symptom in the night is the wife of the person will say. Or, or the husband. Or the husband. Women, women are affected a lot. Women as well. are affected, but men much more. M men much more? Much more. Okay. About twice the, um, twice the amount of, as women, but okay. the husband too. Right. Right? Right. That's not discriminate yet. No, that is what they know the um, <laughs> predominant of the it. Uh, yeah, it's Mostly both men. genders, right. correctly said. Mm -hmm. the, the spouse will come and say, you know, I was hearing the person snoring and then there was a pause where they stopped breathing mm -hmm. and I get so frightened I had to wake them up. Right. Right. That is the second most common symptom. Right. That's if they love you, they'll try to wake you. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll try to wake <laughs> you up. Wake but the body generally wakes up itself, but sometimes yeah. the pause was for so long, it's for more than 10, 15, yeah. 30 seconds. And then these people jump off the bed. And they, yes, so and some of them will say they get insomnia because they jump off the bed cycle and they don't know why. Mm. And that is why sleep apnea, you may wake up 2 o'clock in the night and you don't know why. All right. Right. Uh, are these type of people that have to sleep on three, four pillows? Like sometimes, yes. a lot of times in medicine, as you know, we ask people how many time, how many pillows they sleep on when they can't sleep, especially right. for cardiovascular problems, mm -hmm. because you might have CCF, chronic um, congestive cardiac failure, and so on. Does sleeping on two, three pillows help these people who suffer from Definitely. sleep? Definitely, and they might do it themselves. Mm. So when we um, lie down at night, mm. there's increased blood flow to the nose, the uh -huh. soft palate, uh -huh. and and the throat area, uh -huh. and this causes swelling of the area. Uh -huh. However, when you sleep on two, three pillows, the heart has to pump blood against gravity and it causes less swelling and congestion in the area. Ah, makes sense. However, a lot of things people do as well is they sleep on the side. Yes. So a lot of people will sleep on the side and the tongue and the soft palate will fall away a little bit and they sleep more comfortably. That's like the recovery position. Yes. So a lot of patients, when they snore in a heart, they, they might will just turn their head. Ah. And they say, I had to, I had to turn him there and he, and he Turn stops, him to the side. And he stops snoring. Because the tongue moves to the side yeah. and it opens up the mouth. It, it, 
moves to the side at four, so we opens up the airway. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, I interrupted you there. You're about to tell me about the nighttime symptoms, which you told me, but you yes. didn't tell me about the daytime symptoms. Uh, so one of the nighttime yes. symptoms is waking up more than two times to pee. To pass urine. Right, to pass yeah. urine. Why, why is that? Right. Why would they need to pass urine? Right. With all these microarousals mm -hmm. and the chemicals being released in the brain because of the microarousals, mm -hmm. it stimulates diuresis and mm -hmm. they get up three to four times the pee. Mm -hmm. Which 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 kinds of um, something that we underestimate too is a patients with prostate disease. They sometimes men have to get up three four times to pass urine, and sometimes we don't really think of, think of much about it, but it really affects their sleep. sleep yeah. I mean they do not have sleep apnea, but this is something that affects their quality of life and their sleep. sleep. And we we as as doctors need to really be mm -hmm. cognizant of that as well. Yeah, a lot of doctors really don't delve into that sleep history. Yeah, because again, not yeah. three, four times to pass your will we'll, we'll totally Definitely destroy your sleep. Anything that wakes you up more than once from sleep yeah. will cause fragmented sleep. You wouldn't yeah. be able to go into deep sleep. So yeah. all those chronic pain patients yeah. wake up with pain and back pain and this yes. pain and that pain, they don't properly. get sleep. And that actually is a vicious cycle. When they are sleepless, it potentiates their pain during the day because they are more stressed. Yeah. And then that same pain is causing the sleeplessness. Right, right. Um, take us through some of the daytime symptoms. Also. So the number one daytime symptom is mm. excessive daytime sleepiness. Mm -hmm. So these people will be very fatigued at work. Mm -hmm. The colloquial term for it is dropsy. Right. You say, I'm talking to this guy, he just fall asleep yeah. on himself. That is a symptom of severe obstructive sleep apnea. Yeah. Um, another. So there's you know why this topic is important as well, just to, to put it into perspective. I always had the kind of um, suspicion, right, that a lot of the car accidents we see on the road, that people suffering from, from um, I mean, we always hear about people dropping asleep on the wheel. Mm -hmm. I always had the suspicion that these patients suffer from um, obstructive sleep apnea and have daytime sleepiness yes. and get into car accidents. Yes, so there was a study and, done in the UK. And that's why it's important to discuss this, so people could treat the, the obstructive sleep apnea because it could actually cause them to right. get in a car accident. So Am I correct? You are very correct. I was not going to touch on that yeah. point. Because I, I, that's mm -hmm. something you always read in the newspaper, so don't you? Despite excessive daytime sleepiness when watching TV or after meals yeah. or in work, yeah. motor vehicle accidents and sleeping in the wheel is common in obstructive sleep apnea. You see that a lot in Trinidad. So common, there was a study done that attributed 17% of all motor vehicle accidents in the UK wow. to some people suffering from obstructive sleep apnea. Wow. And this is very important for critical mission workers as well. Yeah. So people who fly planes yeah. and need treatment for obstructive sleep apnea, they can't fall asleep, it's a risky job. Of course. And well, air traffic controllers of in this. And anybody driving a motor vehicle. Anybody, especially truck drivers who do it whole day, they cannot suffer from obstructive sleep apnea. Actually, mm -hmm. it is legislation in the UK mm -hmm. that if you suspect sleep apnea and it's not treated, you have to legally inform um, okay. license, the, 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 the department office, of transport. Yeah? The department of Because transport. the patient might not realize they're about to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. They might not realize, but some of them will wake back up and That's too some late. of them will just fall asleep and crash. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Right, so the other daytime yeah. symptoms are related to mood disorders and neuropsychiatric problems. Mm -hmm. So the mood is irritable. Mm -hmm. um, these people are highly irritable. Mm -hmm. They have clumsiness at work. They mm -hmm. will tell you, you know, I make a simple error and I don't know why, and it's mm -hmm. attributable to their sleep. Mm -hmm. And there are other symptoms as well. Mm -hmm. This has a low drive, low drive, low libido in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. and all of that is attributable to Low motivation sleep. as well. Low motivation all around. And mm -hmm. this will translate Late into depression, mm -hmm. and a lot of people who are depressed mm -hmm. have poor sleep, mm -hmm. and a lot of poor sleep cause depression. And again, it's a vicious cycle. Yeah. The other thing we see a lot about in Trinidad, maybe I mean I'm discussing with other people. I think mostly post pandemic, which could be other reasons. It's a lot more anger in the society. Mm -hmm. People are a lot more short tempered. Yeah. You could see it on the road. Yes, yeah, so after being never, bottled, uh, uh, other than carnival, it's carnival is pleasant. After uh, that, it's it's uh, it's after getting bottled up inside, 
Yeah. We see a total spike in the murder rate. Yeah. Was, aggression, yeah. aggression, so um, lack of consideration for your fellow man, rushing on the road. So you are, These things are related to mood. Yeah, so you're already stressed with the pandemic, post-pandemic, yeah. and imagine lack of sleep on top of that. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have people who want to pull out their hair. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you say, road rage? Road rage, yes. Definitely. These things could be attributable to sleep, right. but there's a lot of people out there, unless you ask them, yeah. they're not getting enough sleep. All right. Can you, I know we haven't really delved into the sleep apnea machinery, but what are the other chronic medical conditions that people who have sleep apnea suffer from? You understand my question? Yes, definitely. Yeah. And what, what does it worsen? So sleep apnea, besides the neuropsychiatric problems mm -hmm. like depression mm -hmm. and decreased mood, mm -hmm. it's a big cardiovascular risk now. Mm -hmm. um, sleep apnea. Sleep apnea, mm -hmm. yes. About 15 years ago, I can tell you that sleep apnea causes heart attack, stroke. You could not have said I that. I could not have no. said that. No. Or arrhythmias. No. Or hypertension. But now we have the, the knowledge. No, it is really well yeah. studied yeah, yeah. that sleep apnea, yeah. because of this recurrent stress on the body and recurrent yeah. dip in oxygen levels yeah. and all these chemicals, especially as something called adrenaline and this sympathetic yeah. overdrive of the heart. Yeah causes high blood pressure, yeah. uh, it causes a, something called a coagulable state with yeah. more clotting in the body yeah. and you are more prone to developing heart attacks, yes. strokes, yes. something sure. called irregular heartbeats yes. with sleep apnea. Can I add um, obesity, right. further obesity? So yeah. let's talk about obesity too yeah. and diabetes. And diabetes. Diabetes is something we can source so Or poorly controlled here. diabetes. Poorly controlled diabetes mm -hmm. and patients who are already diabetic. I agree and patients who are not diabetic, they will get it at an, an earlier stage, mm -hmm. right? It is thought that um, when we have a dip in oxygen mm -hmm. and also there's also retaining of carbon dioxide in the body, yes. it goes to your insulin receptors and causes insulin resistance. Okay. But the other thing is, is that obstructive sleep apnea causes obesity yeah. and why? Yeah. Right, so they studied a hormone called ghrelin. Yeah. Ghrelin is something called a hunger hormone. It right. really causes the body to want something high calorie. Yes. Right? When we undergo obstructive sleep apnea, that hormone is secreted in large amounts. Right. And a lot of people who have that a large amount of ghrelin, yeah. it stimulates their appetite so much that you won't want a high calorie, bad fatty diet. You know the salad is good for you, but you go more for that comfort eating because of that ghrelin. <laughs> yeah, it's it, like a Saturday night yeah. after ten beers, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, we're gonna we're gonna get into the um, the treatment for the sleep apnea in a little while. Um, we're gonna take another break. Yes. And then we come back, we discuss the treatment, the machines. You think, you think you wanna tell us a little bit Definitely. about that? Um, all right, guys. So we'll be back in one moment. We're here with Dr. Mohip. Please send in your questions. Join into the discussion, and we will see you back in one moment. Women's Rights Alliance Annual Solidarity March 2023 Co-organized by the Institute for Gender and Development Studies The Network of NGOs WINAD, Caribbean Women in Leadership, TT, among others At the Queen's Park, Savannah, Saturday, March 11th, 2.30pm to 4.30pm In commemoration of International Women's Day This year's theme, Embrace Everyone 2023, the spotlight is on the importance of protecting the rights of women and girls in all spaces. Women's rights are everyone's responsibility. Bring your t-shirts and come. Bring your message and come. This ad is sponsored by First Citizens Bank Limited.
Connect with ACTN The Voice on Facebook or Instagram at ACTN The Voice. ACTN The Voice, your family-friendly station. All right, guys, welcome back. We're talking about sleep, very important topic and its impact on our health. Um, Dr. Mohep, we're talking about obstructive sleep apnea, and I really want to get into the treatment for it now. Okay. What are the treatments for obstructive sleep apnea? Okay, so it depends on the level of apnea the patient has. Mm -hmm. So I was talking the amount of times we pause yes. breathing per night. Yes. Once it's over five, you will be diagnosed, sorry, five per hour, you'll be diagnosed with obstructive sleep apnea yeah. from something called a sleep study. Yes. Right? What is a sleep study? So a sleep study, or as um, the scientific name for it is polysomnography, mm -hmm. is where we test a certain amount of parameters such as nasal airflow, mm -hmm. Oxygen saturation mm -hmm. while somebody's sleeping. Obviously. While somebody's asleep, mm -hmm. right? And where do they do this? In their home, right? So there's two types of sleep studies. Mm -hmm. There's something called an in-lab sleep study, mm -hmm. where a sleep technician will put you to sleep in a hospital or a room with mm -hmm. all the equipment. Mm -hmm. But then there's a simpler study mm -hmm. where they give you the equipment with simple um, instructions to set up at home. Mm -hmm. The home studies are gaining popularity because people can fall asleep easier at home. Of course. And once you have a high pretest probability of having obstructive sleep apnea, mm -hmm. so say your BMI is over 30 and you have one nighttime symptom mm -hmm. with excessive daytime sleepiness, mm -hmm. you have a good, good chance of picking up sleep apnea in a simple home test kit. All right, so they do this, this sleep study at home? Yes. Um, or in a lab? Mm -hmm. so more, more likely, it may be more comfortable for the patient, I assume, in the house. Um, so they get a diagnosis now Oops, from that, yeah. that they're waking up, the oxygen saturation right. is dropping, they're gasping, and this is a diagnostic of sleep apnea. It's diagnosis. What happens next? Right, so when you have mild sleep apnea, yeah. you have between 5 to 15 apneic episodes per hour. Yeah. Moderate is between 15 and 29, and severe yeah. is over 30. Yeah. So for the mild people, yeah. or the mild patients, we can do conservative therapy of just weight loss right. and lifestyle changes, like okay. avoiding alcohol before sleep, yeah, yeah. controlling the diet, yeah. uh, avoid any kind of sleeping medication that will relax the muscles. Yeah. And this is usually met with good results. Okay. Okay? Okay. For the more severe types or moderate to severe types, yeah. the gold standard of treatment is something called a CPAP machine. Right. Right? What is so that? that? That is a continuous positive airway pressure. Mm -hmm. It's a machine which is the opposite of vacuum, it blows air, mm -hmm. right? So it is a simple face ma mask attached mm -hmm. to a machine which blows positive pressure into the air and mouth mm -hmm. and it acts as a stent to always keep the air, um, airway open. Mm -hmm. And when we do this and we wear this mask, it abolishes all the apneic episodes and we wake up feeling refreshed. Okay. The thing about it is CPAP is called continu continuous positive airway pressure. Mm -hmm. The problem about the mask mm -hmm. is only 40% of people with the mask wear the mask. What do you mean by that? So, say you... You have to wear the mask to get it. You have to wear the mask, but, but the mask is uncomfortable for yeah. some patients. Yeah. Some patients have to breathe against high pressures and they say, you know what, they can't okay. fall asleep like that. Right. Some people get dryness of the nose. Right. Some people swallow the air and wake up with aerophasia, but there are a lot of fixes with new machines for right. this. So it's right. really a kind of trial and error thing with a CPAP machine? Well, what you're supposed to have is a proper sleep technician as well as the doctor to go through the best fitting mask for you. Right. They're also supposed to have cognitive behavioral therapy for you to accept the mask, wear it when you're not sleeping, get accustomed to the mask. You're supposed to have a CPAP buddy who is your partner being very supportive of the mask. Right. Because most of the failures that happen with CPAP happens within the first two weeks. Right. They will pull off the mask and they don't get that proper counseling to keep on the mask or change any type of mask. Right. Because it is uncomfortable. Only 40% uses the mask and that's the big problem with the CPAP machine. Okay. But there's a new technologies addressing that okay. where they're making something called a BiPAP machine right. or APAP machine. Right. So BiPAP is when you have two pressures. Right. When you breathe in, you will have the higher pressure open in the airway and when you breathe out, the machine will sense that you're breathing out and lower the pressure so you don't, easier. you don't have to breathe against those pressures right. and the, that is the most commonly prescribed mask now. All right. Um, 
we have a good bit of um, viewer engagement and we need to um, we need to answer the public basically so um, Josh let's um, let's get some questions in from the from the audience great program docs why do asthma patients need to elevate their heads when sleeping well asthma as we know it is very is an airway disease mm -hmm. it causes narrowing mm -hmm. of the bronchioles causes chest tightness mm -hmm. it's yeah it causes wheezing yeah. but also many asthma patients suffer from allergies as well yeah so about 20 to 40 percent of asthmatic patients yeah. have nose problems and swelling and inflammation of the nose good information also mm -hmm. asthma and reflux goes hand in hand mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so a lot of patients as we know a lot of patients suffer from gastroesophageal reflux disease mm -hmm. and when you have that reflux coming up and going into the airway it exacerbates asthma mm -hmm. so I, a lot of pulmonologists will tell them mm -hmm. they will use a something called a ppi which is an antacid yeah, yeah, yeah. and it tell you raise the head of the bed so that reflux does not exacerbate your asthma mm -hmm. and then it's, it's a comfortable position to increase the amount of oxygen coming in yeah i suppose um, it's a comfortable position, comfortable position. To, to really open the airway open the airways and once you oh, have an open airway you get right so somebody who tends airway. to be i mean you might not be seeing them have an active at, uh, asthma attack but you might be seeing the person who maybe maybe a child sitting up all the time sleeping upwards uh, really need to check their, their nostrils their nose to make sure they don't have polyps um, Something might be, they might not be having an asthma attack, but they might be an asthmatic patient with, with these symptoms in the nose, as you said, and yes. they need to see an ENT doctor to basically diagnose that and diagnose treat it. That. Um, it's not, not really that they're asthmatic, that they're asthmatic and have an asthma attack, but there's something going on in their airway that mm -hmm. makes them routinely sit up to breathe. Next question there, Josh. Is there a cycle of time that is best for naps? Like two hours, three hours, really good question. What about the power nap, the, co the concept of the power nap? That's an excellent question. Yeah. No. I've known a lot of businessmen and, and professionals too, lawyers and doctors, sometimes at one o'clock in the afternoon, they switch off the lights in the office, take a 15 minute nap or 15 minute relax, switch mm -hmm. back on the light and they go again and feel energized. Or in other countries like Italy, I think, or Spain, they go, uh, probably both, they, they have something called siestas. Where yes, they take a little nap after, after lunch after and then lunch they go and they, and they work till 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night. What do you think about that? Right, so while it's not ideal, it is impossible to get uninterrupted sleep for 7 to 9 hours in the modern living man yeah, yeah, yeah. right yeah. because traffic you're always checking the email you have to get up early morning, early. Get some people with business plans go straight yeah. to one Most on the right. they can't be there for eight. you can only get four hours sleep yeah, yeah, yeah. so to repair sleep that they have to take power naps during right, work right, right, the other people right. that need power naps is shift workers yeah so yeah. shift work is any type of work outside the hours of 7 a.m yeah. yeah. to about 7 p.m yeah and these patients, well, sorry, these patients, yes, need to sleep during the day when they come home from work. Yeah. But they don't ever get five to nine hours. So you always say anytime you're on shift work, if you can get a little power nap to feel energized, All right. you can. But it's, it's not the ideal thing right. for, for, for sleep. Yeah. Josh? Would more sleep help remove dark circles around my eyes? Good question. People normally say dark circles around the eyes because of lack of sleep. Is that true? Definitely. You, mm -hmm. We all saw a guy in work kind of say, hey, he worked 24 hour cold because the mm -hmm. eye was sunken in. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, that's a very good question. Yeah. Because in our population. Yeah, you look well rested. Your eyes have no dark circles. Well, yeah, that's if because I got sleep. If, ten if I didn't get sleep, yeah. I'll have an increased amount of dark circles in the eyes. Right. But however, mm -hmm. a lot of people naturally have dark circles under the eye because mm -hmm. especially of the East Indian descent, mm -hmm. right? What happens, and a lot of people with allergies, they call it allergic shiners, uh -huh. they naturally have these dark circles because they have allergies and they have puffiness under their eye. But however, your best look or your, your, your lightest um, circles will be when you are rested. Mm -hmm. But can you get lighter eyes than when you are rested? Mm -hmm. Somebody have to ask a dermatologist that mm -hmm. rest in. Mm -hmm. um, right. That's a very good answer. Yes. Um, and, I, and I like the part about the allergies as yeah. well. Because people don't realize they have allergies sometimes, and allergies cause yeah. the swelling, and, 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 and sometimes when the swelling goes down, you get darkness. Because there the are eyes. a lot of rested people that naturally have yeah. dark circles yeah. under the eye, and it's a genetic thing. Yeah. But there are little tricks dermatologists can use to help them. To help them. Right. Yeah. Um, next question there, Josh. Who does it? Who does it feel like I am dreaming for the entire night and I wake up feeling drained and even more tired even though I slept for eight hours? 
what do you think about that patient? It's basically how how does how how is it that I feel like I'm dreaming for the entire night and I wake up feeling dreamed even though I'm First of all, let's take the first part of the question. You feel yeah. like you're dreaming for the entire night. Yeah. So is that person dreaming for the entire night? Most likely not. Yeah. You can't be in REM sleep for the entire night. Yeah. But your perception of sleep is something really skewed. Yeah. It have some people who will wake up and say, I only thought I get five minutes sleep. Yeah. But eight hours has passed. Yeah. It has some people who will only dream for two hours, but they say whole night I dream. Yeah. Right? But most likely this patient is feeling unrefreshed because their quality of sleep is bad. Which we discussed earlier. Which you need a sleep study to diagnose. diagnose. Because they are twisting and turning most likely obstructive sleep apnea, yeah. apnea is the number one cause. Or something else in the nasal so passages. That person needs somebody to say, are they snoring? Yeah. Are they twisting and turning? Is yeah. that person sleeping for the entire eight hours? Yeah. Or they are waking up gradually? Agreed. Right. Yeah. And there are other thing that, things that cause excessive daytime sleepiness. Yeah. It will have the patient who have no problems with sleep but they have an underlying problem that causing sleepiness yes yes any medical condition yes, 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 yes. heart disease depression yeah. uh, endocrine problems endocrine thyroid problems, problems thyroid problems and even yeah. psychological problems you get eight hours of sleep but you're yeah. fatigued because depression because slight depression yeah. alone yeah. could cause you just not feeling anxiety. a morning person yeah. anxiety is a big yeah. one right stress stress you get in this sleep but yeah. this underlying condition has you fatigue yeah. that's why you need to take such a big long history yeah. because even something normal as a thyroid problem could have you feeling fatigued Good yeah. point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Josh. Should I should I take sleeping meds for a better sleep? What do you think about that question? We physicians try to avoid sleeping meds mm. at all costs, mm -hmm. especially the most commonly prescribed sleeping meds, Benzodiaz benzodiazepine. Mm -hmm. No. Benzo is something that could be a lifesaver. Mm -hmm. Only when the benefit outweighs the risk of taking the benzodiazepine mm -hmm. can it be described. Yeah, so and I mean it's it's something mm -hmm. I sorry to interrupt you there, but it's something that in physicians in the past, in the eighties and the seventies, or in the US and all those places, even in Trinidad, we tend to use a lot. They tend to prescribe a lot of benzodiazepines in those mm -hmm. times. Uh, Xanax and uh, Xanax, and, uh, palm, right? And and we, we 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 have been a little bit more educated now. We're seeing the results of people with being addicted to benzodiazepines and we're seeing the effects. Mm -hmm. And the prescribing culture of physicians around the world has changed a little bit. Yes. And I think that's what you're alluding to. Yes. So the, as I say, the benzos, mm -hmm. it's feel like it's God sent at first. Yeah. But you need to increase the dosage to get the desired effect yeah. to fall asleep and maintain sleep. Yeah. And the problem arises when the patient tries to still withdraw the drug. Yeah. They can get seizures, irritability, yeah. they can get hospitalized. Good so point. that sleeping pill, a benzo needs to be under medical supervision from a psychiatrist yes. or even a GP to, so when you feel like you're better and you could actually regularize the sleep with proper sleep hygiene, you start to withdraw the medication slowly. Yeah. But that's a last resort. Things like melatonin, I think it's safer, yeah. but um, it, sometimes it doesn't work as well. Yeah. But something simple as melatonin is much more yeah. desired because it's a natural compound. Okay. Any other questions, there, Josh? Why is it that I take a while to fall asleep, yet my husband, as soon as his head touches the pillow, he gets asleep? Many, many reasons why. Yeah. Yeah. And most common reason why you're not falling asleep yeah. is because you have anxiety and your thoughts yeah. are racing in your head. Yeah. Her husband, yes. is, her husband is able to relax, r unwind, relax, yes. and don't take on anything. So very chilled. She, um, on the other hand, could have anxiety. Yes. She could have thoughts racing. Yes. Or she has a proper poor sleep hygiene where she's yes. not as active during the day. Yes. Um, and sometimes, you know, you just go and you look at the ceiling for an hour and you haven't fallen asleep yeah. as yet. Yeah. And let me tell you another thing that causes that. Yeah. Smartphone devices, TV, okay. right? TV and TV in your bedroom. Okay. A lot of people have TVs in their bedroom, mm -hmm. smartphone phones in their bedroom, yes. and the blue light that is emitted from these devices actually mm -hmm. goes to the brain and stops the brain from secreting that sleep hormone, which is melatonin. Mm -hmm. That's okay. why they say be an hour before sleep, it shouldn't be on a smartphone. We yeah. are all guilty of going through our yeah, email yeah, 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 yeah. and that affects your sleep. Okay, so the blue light limits the release of melatonin. Yes. Oh. The blue light actually goes straight to the optic nerve right. and resets that entire circadian mm -hmm. rhythm. Wow. <laughs> Oh, that's powerful information there. Uh, any more questions there, Josh? 
do mattress type costs matter in terms of getting a good night's sleep? Oh, definitely. That's a good question. So sleep hygiene not only is eating properly before sleep mm -hmm. or having a regular sleep schedule mm -hmm. or no devices, mm -hmm. it's also about comfort. So a yes, proper okay. mattress mm -hmm. that you find comfortable will make you sleep longer. Mm -hmm proper temperature you can't sleep in the extremes of cold or heat mm -hmm. you will wake up a couple times mm -hmm. per night so would you recommend to those patients to invest in a good mattress all those fancy nice mattresses we see it on TV we see them in the stores they make a difference those memory foams I think could make a difference but okay. it have some people who can sleep on a hard mattress because they're just accustomed to it yeah right but it, it don't make a difference but it do make a person if you feel like you have this hard mattress against you that is yeah. uncomfortable yeah buy a nice mattress buy a nice mattress it will add to your sleep mm -hmm. hygiene mm -hmm. okay Let's take the final three questions there, Josh. Let's push through. What is the best temperature for sleep? Good question. Right. So in the tropical area, most mm. people sleep with air condition, which yeah. is the best temperature for sleep. Yeah. And what, the, what temperature? Around 23 and 24 degrees. Okay. Right? Mm. On, on the um, air condition. Air condition. Mm -hmm. Right? When it drops to 18, 17, it might have these really cold drafts coming in. Mm -hmm. And above that, it might be a little warm where you sweat underneath. Mm -hmm. I find most patients say around 23, 24. Mm -hmm. They get the best. Sleep. Also, you need to have the environment at a one temperature. So it's not very um, advisable to have the air condition hitting them directly. Right. Put it away from the bed so the entire. Okay. Area, just one cool temperature. Okay, and fans. Um, you can sleep well yeah, with a fan yeah. as a, okay. as, uh, as well. Right. Um, some people say if a fan is burning them constantly, yeah. they get okay. stuffy. Okay, so the, like the thing is that the whole room is at the yeah. same temperature. But you can oscillate the fan, and, and people yeah. get accustomed to that. All right, Josh, we take the next question. Why sometimes I feel as though I am falling when I'm sleeping, and it wakes me up suddenly? Um, so. It's a very funny thing when... You've ever heard that complaint before yes. as a ENT doctor? Yeah, i heard many things... Like that? Like, like that. Yeah. Tell me, what, what is it? So, if we think back to our psychiatry textbooks, uh -huh. when we are falling asleep, uh -huh. there's something called hypnagogic hallucinations, uh -huh. right? So, in between wake and sleep, there are hallucinations could, that yeah. could happen. Uh -huh. It could be tactile, uh -huh. it could be auditory, where you hear your mom call you like, uh -huh. and nobody is there. Yes. And then it could be obviously sensory, where they feel like they've fallen and, and they wake back up. It's oh, not wow. vertigo, it's just a hallucination. Okay, so it's not Most vertigo. Sometimes, no. Right. And a lot of people will say, while I've fallen to sleep too, I feel like something holding me down. What twitch? Yeah, yeah. Right? And that's something called sleep paralysis. It's just something that happens as soon as you're going into that wake to sleep, yeah. that, 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 that barrier there, a lot of weird things the body go through. Yeah, like yeah. the dream they're playing football and the leg kicking. And, and the leg kicking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boxing and, and beating and, up and people. Beating, and beating <laughs> up people. But a lot of people hear something or witness yeah. something or they see something move. Yeah. And especially that hallucination can happen when you're waking up in the morning. Yes. It's in between waking up, you think you're, you're right. seeing things and this time you're not fully awake, you're All just right. hallucinating. All right, Josh, let's take the final question. And we'll wrap up. Why do I forget my dreams when I wake up? Hard question. Yeah, I don't know if you have the answer yeah, to that. Sigmund Freud, that question. Yeah, that, that's, that's a question. Yeah, that's but science, a lot of people have vague dreams, yeah. and then a lot of people have vivid dreams, right? Um, yeah. Science doesn't know why you can remember dreams, but yeah. sometimes, right, yeah. you don't remember a dream, and later down the line, you take it out of your subconscious. Right. The dream is stored in the memory, and sometimes people can mem memorize a dream, but sometimes people just forget their dream and remember it at a later date. Right. Yeah. Um, <coughs> you have a you have a contact address that people could reach out to. So, um, is there email that you have, or should I tell people to just reach out to Josh in the studio here, and he will forward on your details to them off here? Yes, definitely. Because people have been asking for people it. Just, um, it's, a, it's an important topic. You can people just research my name, Shara. Yeah, it's right on the internet. And you can get something. Uh, sure, it. Um, Thanks for coming in tonight. It yes. was a, is a, is a very important topic. It's something that we, we realized that needed to be discussed. Um, and, and we just wanted to highlight the effect of sleep so people could, could them on themselves map it out and realize what is happening around them and, 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 and connect the dots. Because nobody will connect the dots if they don't know what's the cause. Or, you understand what I mean? That sleep deprivation could cause many problems in your life. And um, I think it was, it was well delivered by yourself. Yes, um, thank you. You told me that you didn't prepare much, but you certainly did prepare very well. Yeah, we'll be <laughs> we <laughs> I think you gave me that to hold because you certainly explained it, um, I would say, exceptionally. Okay, thank right? you. And um, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you engaging with the audience at home. It was very informative, and thanks for everything.
Well, thanks for having me. It was a pleasure <laughs> being interviewed by you. <laughs> no Dr. problem. Robert. No problem, Shred. Great to have you. Um, so, guys, um, just thanks to Shred again, and thank you at home for um, coming in, for, for um, messaging in, and um, interacting with us, and keeping the discussion going. And many thanks to Josh tonight in the studio, running up and down, and keeping the program moving forward. All right, guys. So keep safe, keep well. God bless you all, and we'll see you again next week. Take care. Now. Have a pleasant evening, everyone.